Dear Future Asian Generation, It seems like you can't avoid it. In every social media outlet, every news article, every radio broadcast, we are faced with the reality of a spike of brutal attacks on Asians. Elderly Asians being shoved to the ground, defenseless citizens being robbed and kicked like they are worthless, or even worse. Whenever I watch these video clips, I feel millions of bottled up emotions swelling my head and my heart. This or that person could have been my grandparents, my mother, or anyone in my family. Prior to the pandemic, I used to see members of the elderly Asian community walking around the park for exercise, going to meet up with their friends to catch breakfast at a dim sum restaurant, or simply strolling around the block. I rarely see that these days. My memories of life before the pandemic seems like a fantasy. Truth is, I'm no good at this. My life has been a constant battle of who I am and who I want to be. I've longed for the day where I can clearly define my identity. I've spent hours ruminating what it truly means to be an Asian American, and honestly, I've never really seen myself as an Asian American. I've only considered myself to be an American. I was an American when I was born in the most diverse city on Earth. I was American when I witnessed two planes crash into the World Trade Center. And I was American when I raised my right hand and swore to defend this country. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and infidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty. Professor Urmi Ghosh Dasidhar from Mathematics Department, originally from Kolkata, a cosmopolitan city located in eastern part of India. As an Asian American, I embrace multiculturalism and diversity. I consider myself as a lifelong learner and always eager to learn from my students about their cultures and traditions. I love my students and listening to their stories and personal journeys. Besides solving math problems, I also like to paint and draw. With vibrant colors, my work frequently celebrates nature and its beauty. Many of them also have geometric patterns or mathematical symbols, which signify my love for mathematics. I don't know how to start my Asian story or a story about my identity, yet just a word alien popped in my mind. The very first time I saw the word alien was on a document form describing a person who is from another country. As a second generation immigrant to a new country, I never think of myself as an alien to this place or this country. A little about my own history. I was born in a place that was multicultural and trilingual, Cantonese, English, and Mandarin. And this place was having different people coming from different places. I wasn't feeling strange at all for living in a community with people with different cultures and backgrounds. grew up in a poor town, northern region of China in the 1940s. He was passionate about reading. All he wanted to do was to go to school, but his family had no money, so he took a bag of rice to school in exchange for tuition. When the Civil War broke out in China, people everywhere were escaping and relocating. Spring did not understand war. All he knew was that he could no longer attend school because his teachers were moving away. He knelt in front of his parents for three days before they reluctantly agreed for him to leave home with his teachers. For the next few years, Spring's life was uncertain. He traveled with his teachers and fellow students. 
begging for food from town to town. Sometimes they rode on the train, other times they traveled on foot. Little did anyone know he would not communicate or see his family again for 40 years. Spring is my father. This is his story about a lifelong journey in pursuit of knowledge. He is 88 years old, a retired professor of education in Taiwan. He devoted his life to teaching and promoting the importance of learning. His journey had inspired me and many of his students to be a passionate educator. I am a second generation Chinese American. My parents were first generation, coming to America from China and Indonesia. Even though I spoke Chinese as a child, my Chinese is limited and English is the only language I speak fluently. I am Chinese American, but I'm more American than anything else. In my suburban grade school in West Virginia, I was always the only Chinese kid in the class. I was teased for bringing Chinese noodles, which my mom packed for my lunch. My classmates said I was eating worms. My gymnastics coach called me Kung Fu Wu. This nickname did not bother me. I patiently explained to my mom that it was meant affectionately, but she did not like it. She had had her own experiences growing up as Chinese in Indonesia, being an ethnic minority. At a high school party, a boy that I had a crush on asked me, so if you have mixed children, do you think they'll be accepted? He did not ask me to the prom. I did not get asked to the prom ever. I do not know if this was because I'm Chinese or because I wasn't part of that popular group, but I know that I felt out of sync. 25 years later, I was a mother of three children living in New York City. My seven-year-old son came home from school and told me that his classmate had taunted him with, go back to where you belong. My children were growing up in the most diverse city in the world, and yet I heard echoes of my own growing up experiences I did not tell his teacher about his hurt. In my mind, it must have registered as part of the Asian American experience, the first of many slights that he would have to learn to ignore. Growing up in New York City, I encountered a lot of racism, even from an early age to present day in 2022. I remember at a young age in elementary school, I opened my food and I heard the teacher say, whose food smells like that? and I felt very insecure about bringing my mom's home-cooked food into school ever since then. Presently, time to time, I do hear the typical stereotypes that you all probably are aware of, and it disappoints me because I'm an American as well. Racism was 100% taught to us because we definitely weren't born evil, and it definitely was not innate. Kick out every single Chinese in this country that is loyal to the CCP. China's cheating on us. Hold the Chinese Communist Party accountable for the Wuhan coronavirus. In March 2020, when the coronavirus hit, our city went into lockdown. Just before that, I remember one day on the subway, I heard a sneeze. I noticed some movement. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed an Asian man and people staring, moving away from him. As a fellow Asian, I knew what was happening. I had been wondering when I might experience something like that. I thought I should say something in his defense, but I said nothing. My whole life, I've had the quiet unsettling feeling that I am an outsider in my own country. Ever since the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the world, Asian Americans have been blamed for it. From March 2020 to March 2021, the Stop Asian American Pacific Island Hate Organization tracked over 6,600 attacks targeting Asian Americans. These are only the ones that have been tracked. There are thousands and thousands of incidents that go unnoticed and unsaid. Owning to the embarrassment that those who wish to report might feel. After all, many of the targeted victims have been senior citizens. Those who are vulnerable, 
who cannot fight back, who might not even speak English. Young Asian Americans like me are also at risk. Being petite five feet one Chinese girl, I've been hugely concerned about safety. I see the way some people look at me when I'm in public. It's almost as if they cannot wait to say something rude or racist to my face. And my worst nightmare, physically trying to assault me. I think about my family every single day as I go to work or do basic everyday routines, hoping that they are okay. Our new reality is to live in fear and to always watch your backs, even if we're going on a simple stroll or just going grocery shopping. A bouquet of yellow roses lay outside this Chinatown apartment building for Christina Yuna Lee, a regular of South My family and I went to visit Fortunato Brothers, an old Italian bakery in Williamsburg. I was in a Brighton Beach bakery. We went to celebrate my daughter's recovery from a medical illness. I was conscious that with my mask on, my distinctive almond-shaped eyes were the only part of my face. I heard the jingle of the bell as the door opened, followed by the lyrical banter of Italians. The bakery girl stopped me and told me I had to pay 85 cents for the container. I turned around to peek at the visitors as they cheerily walked up to the counter. The banter stopped. I pointed to my bag, informed her that I had just purchased her pastries. She repeated that I had to pay for the container. The Italian woman looked at me and quickly pulled her scarf from around her neck to cover her nose and mouth. Another shopper wearing a yarmulke with Cardoza Law School insignia showed sympathy for me. Don't worry, they're just this way here, he said. The whole party took a step back. I decided to walk out, but from behind me I heard the shop girl say, if you don't like it, you can shop somewhere else. Chinatown. The irony of it. COVID cases were rising exponentially in Italy. I was stunned for a moment, but I yelled back. That's racist. But because of the color of my skin, I was the presumed super spreader. As I walked away, I wondered, was it because of the pandemic? Even though many Europeans were carrying the virus to the States. Should I treat this as a non-event and ignore it? Just as I have most of my life? Starting after the severe spreading of the COVID, I started to have a feeling, not a pleasant feeling. I am different or special to others because I am Asian. This insecure feeling happened to be in a country where people pursue their dreams. When I came back to the most diverse city on earth, I was greeted with the news that other Americans and citizens were targeted solely because of their ethnicity. Watching this unfold was utterly soul-shattering. As a veteran, I have seen people from all walks of life and culture devote the entirety of their lives, ensuring the safety and security of this country. Like many others before me, we have returned home physically broken and mangled with nothing but a vision for a future. This vision is as old as America itself. This vision embodies the amalgamations of cultures of all the countries of the world. This culture is meant to be shared and appreciated by all who come. Regrettably, when hate is introduced to this vision, the idea becomes tainted like a soiled paintbrush bleeding into a cup of water. This idea becomes muddied and clouded. A once clear and concise idea becomes unlit, and the legacy of those of who were here before us becomes forgotten. I can no longer imagine walking outside, taking the train, or minding my business without people simply staring at me. My family worries about me every single day, especially given what is going on. Consequently, They try to make sure my boyfriend is with me at all times if I leave the house. In fact, I refuse to leave the house if my boyfriend is not with me. He is not Chinese, but he is South Asian and Black. Racism means that this tends to discourage people from harassing me. At the same time, everyone sees him as Latinx. Racism means I still feel the negativity people have towards us when we are together. Racism in America, I've experienced firsthand 
is rarely ever just directed against a single group. With COVID affecting so many people, the past few years felt dangerous, especially when I hear the recent attacks and deaths in the subways and streets. I was scared to walk around and run errands, and I had the need to watch my back everywhere I went. The city shut down. In a matter of weeks, once busy streets emptied out, and the emptiness made the city feel dangerous. I still traveled this ghostly landscape, crossing streets to avoid men who spat in our direction, to chaperone my daughter to multiple medical therapies. It makes me happy to see that so many Americans have vocalized their solidarity with us. Still, it's disheartening that this happened to begin with. And we Asians must do more to protect ourselves especially those in the community who cannot defend themselves. It's just not cool. I'm mean, not doing anything wrong. I'm just living my life too. We shouldn't get shot or beat over it. And that's why I think that instead of stupid piano lessons, you should be rolling kids into like a judo or Brazilian jiu-jitsu class. If you're going to defend yourself, yeah. But hopefully the fight doesn't end up on the ground because on the street is a whole different thing. Not like a competition where you're earning points. But I, if, if I'm being wrong, I don't think you should enroll your child, your Asian American child into like a karate or Thai boxing class. Because first of all, that's their last resort. And also if you're resorting to punching and kicking, you're hurting, doing more damage. Like, why should we be the victims? Like, we didn't bring anything to the world. We're just living our life, not doing anything wrong. Now we gotta watch our backs. We must refuse to stay silent. No one should have to feel this way. The pandemic is exposing racism as a fault line running deep in the American landscape. And it is not just here. Anti-Asian sentiment is on the rise globally. We cannot remain silent. As an Asian American, I feel a heavy obligation to write about the atrocities of recent events and condemn violence against the Asian communities around the United States. But as an American, I feel a heavier obligation to say there is no place for hate in our home against all cultures and ethnicities. The responsibility now falls to us to create a safe haven for the cultures that come seeking better opportunities and futures. Seeing all the hate crimes against the Asian community, I told myself, all right, the community wants to make this special in a way. The people want to make this special in a way. I should let this to become special in its way. I later realized my Asian identity could be something very strong in expression, especially in the art and design field. I got to finish a photography project in the spring semester of 2021, and through this project to share a message of Stop Asian AAPI Hate. This project was done after Vermeer's girl with a pearl earring, dressed in Asian style, clothing, and jewelry. I was desperately looking for a way to pursue my passion and hobby. Thus began my exploration with colors, with a drawing pad, markers, pens, and pencils. I work during my breaks, between semesters, during my subway ride, or when flying to conferences. This technique is born out of necessity. It is a sustainable way I can pursue my dream, which can ultimately bring a sense of purpose. It is up to our educators parents and policyholders to change this thought behavior so we can stop the hatred towards specific ethnicities and cultures. As an Asian American, I also believe that we are not the only victims to racism. We must respect and aid other cultures and ethnicities as well. The pandemic and the unrest in the world have caused separations, shutdowns, fears and misgivings among people, states and nations. We learn from the boy named Spring, whose strength, resilience, courage, and passion for learning help break down the barriers and connect people from all walks of life. Spring named his daughter, Xu Ping, serenity and peace, to continue the noble work of connecting and helping others 
through teaching and learning. I ask everyone reading to remember the legacies of those who built this country. Recall the deeds of those who built the railroads connecting one coast to the other. Recall the deeds of civil rights leaders like Yuri Kochiyama, who fought for civil rights with Malcolm X. Recall the deeds of Mabel Tinghua Lee, who fought fiercely for women's suffrage and rights. In spite of these monumental contributions, the work is not done. In spite of it all, I continue to hope. I hope the fear changes soon. I hope that our collective treatment of each other will change and shift for the better. With the rise of Black Lives Matter, I never saw so many people stand up, come together, and fight for what is right. Similarly, I hope that we can act as a group to fight against anti-Asian racism and that we can all become aware of the racial injustice and violence happening around the world. When you're reading this many years after 2021 has passed, I hope things have indeed changed.